I love track days. I love how you can take your car, whatever it is, and explore the limits of both you and the car in a relatively safe environment. It is great fun. You hang out with friends and have a good time. But there are rules. You can't actually race. You can't dive bomb anybody. You need a point by to pass. And there's only so much time on the track. And I personally have a hard time pushing my car 100% knowing that I'll have to drive it home. So what happens if track days aren't enough for you? Well, you come here. Welcome to Chump Car. Let's go check it out. So what exactly is Chump Car? A car driven by chumps? To tell us more about Chump Car, here's Kathy McCause. Um, I am Kathy McCause and I'm the Western Regional Director for Chump Car and I manage 11 states and uh, Western Canada and Mexico. This series started back in 2009 with one race in Portland, Oregon, and we now do 70 events in three countries. Jump Car is really a throwback to the days of driving what you had available to you, often driving your race car to the track. And as the motorsports industry has progressed, it's gotten very expensive, very complex. The principle of Jump Car is a $500 race car, making it available and affordable to just about anybody. And as you know, we uh, drive at epic race car tracks, Ridge Motorsports Park, Daytona, Watkins Glen, Charlotte. So it allows a lot of folks that would never have the opportunity to be in a race car to come out and fulfill their need for speed. Well, I have to tell you, I didn't get into a race car myself till I was 42 years old. And if this grandma can go racing, anybody can go racing. And what's really cool about this is that a $500 race car is not that difficult to get. Someone's grandma's got to have an old Corolla or Honda laying around. And the community online and at the tracks, these folks all jump in to help. We're always available to help teams and provide them guidance on how to get into it. And if they're not ready to get into a car, we'd love to have them come out and volunteer. Chub Car uh, regularly contributes to our local food banks when we come into town. We've raised about $60,000 for food banks this last year. Uh, we support Girls and Boys Club. We support Red Cross. So really try to make sure that when we leave a community, we leave it in a better condition than when we arrived. In. We're here at the Ridge Motorsports Park for three days of endurance racing with the Shift Autosport team. If you watched our VCMC at Pikes Peak video, then you may recognize a few faces on this team. The team is headed up by Sed Kosovic, who's the logistics manager, and Richard Garau, who's the head race engineer. We'll be running two Volkswagens, a 1989 Mark II Jetta and a 1980 Mark I Scirocco. Both of these cars are maintained and tuned by the Burnaby-based Volkswagen specialist, Shift Autosport, where Richard is the owner. To help drive these cars, we also have on our team Steven, Brad, Kang, Sean, Mark, as well as myself and my cameraman, Ken. The 23 hours will be spread over three days, with each day requiring a set number of driver changes. Okay, enough talking. Let's get to racing. Yeah, well this weather blows. As this is both mine and Ken's first time wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing, Sed has us go out in the less aggressively set up Jetta. Richard takes the car out for a short stint first to ensure the car is running right before Ken hops into the car. I will follow after Ken's stint. Ken goes out first and being the incredible driver he is, it doesn't take him long to get comfortable. Before you know it, he is out passing people all over the place. That's not to say he doesn't have a share of incidents, however. Before I know it, it is my turn. I've never driven this car before and only have a few go-karting sessions and initial D as my knowledge base for wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing. Ken jumps out of the car looking rather terrified. Hmm. There is so much going on. Ken's trying to strap me in as I can't see the buckles. Set is giving me some pointers. I gotta keep the visor down while fueling is going on, and I'm just trying to figure out if my seating position is gonna be okay for the next two hours. Hmm. Do I have to pee? I finally head out of the pits and I can hardly contain my excitement. What is it going to be like in this car I've never driven before? Scary for one. With the weather conditions being what they are, visibility is a real challenge and I rely on trails to spray to figure out where cars are. Making matters worse, the harness, side view mirror and roll bar all conspire to make it even more difficult to see some of the apexes. Although I have driven this track a few times before, it is completely different in a race environment. 
cars seem to be everywhere and I find myself checking the mirrors a lot. I'm having a tough time getting into a rhythm with all the cars passing me at this point. To add insult to injury, I get black flagged. In other words, caught doing an illegal move. The track marshals tell me that I made an illegal pass, but I don't recall passing anyone. My plan of driving conservatively and staying on the track hasn't exactly panned out. Turn 9 is banked right at the apex, however when it rains it causes the water to pull up right there. Not only do I get splashed as I go through, but it causes the car to skip over what feels like at least 3 feet, making for a hairy corner exit. At this point, the window fogging has become a serious issue, and I come in as the windows are now fogged up so bad that I can't see where I'm going. Sed comes in to help clean out my windows and give me some coaching. I wasn't lying. It's almost as if I got used to it at this point. I head back out with some newfound confidence now that I can see in the wet. I now start pushing the car a bit harder and I'm catching up to people. I start paying attention to the grip levels, the sound of that very torquey engine, and even remember to relax on the straightaway, somewhat. This is starting to feel fun. I'm starting to gain more confidence with every lap and my lap times are slowly but surely coming down. Before I know it, the track is drying out, I have a few cars I'm hanging with and the session is over. As luck would have it, after Ken and I's first stints in Chump Car, the sun comes out and the team is well positioned for a respectable placement. After a few more sessions, the cars come in. Sed and Sean both bring the cars back in one piece, which is amazing given our cars have had a collective 25 off-road adventures in 9 hours of driving. To prepare for the early start the next day, we try to get the cars as prepared as possible. Jobs are divvied up based on their skill set, refueling, brake maintenance, etc. And so naturally for me, I have the honorable task of, well, cleaning windows. And with that, we're ready for day two. It's day two. Things are looking good as the weather is much clearer and less wet. So here's Chump Car for you. About an hour and a half in, and uh, we're running one, two, and three with the guys right beside us. Yeah, but like you never know what'll happen. Got a full course yellow right now with a car in the dirt with a wheel off. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. We got eight more hours. While we are waiting for a planned session in the afternoon, a Ford Focus comes in on a flatbed. Its wheel studs have sheared off and the driver lost control in the track. Nobody is hurt, but the car is in bad shape. But before we know it, the pit crews remove the car, replace the wheel bearing, reattach the brakes, and the car is back out and running. Shortly after, an S13 comes in with a flat. And once again, the team jumps into action and gets the car back on its way. It's simply amazing how these teams refuse to give up and just keep on racing, doing whatever it takes. In the afternoon, Ken gets scheduled to drive the Scirocco while I have the jet at the same time. I'm picturing Team 143 car driving side by side, leading the way while our team cheers us on. I can't wait. Sed comes into the Scirocco a bit early as it's run out of fuel, and Ken frantically jumps into action. Strangely, the Jetta is also running low on fuel and I get called in early as well. Hmm, I hope it's nothing serious. But more importantly, will I find Ken out there? Will we get to drive side by side with our team cheering us on in glory? Well, given how many people are passing me at this point, it shouldn't be too long. Before I know it, Ken catches up to me in the Scirocco. It is on! Well, except in all the excitement, my foot gets stuck behind the brake pedal for a second and I miss my braking point. Ken passes me in the Scirocco as my tires are now fully locked up and I'm heading off track. I'm able to coax the car into staying on track, but by this time Ken is long gone. Nice! However, even after Ken was gone, I had my own fair share of struggles. Gone was the wet weather and fogging windows, but now it seemed like cars were looking to pass everywhere and I just couldn't get into a groove. On top of this, my radio disconnected itself so I had no communication with the pits. I exited the car for the next driver kind of pissed off. I had worked hard to improve my skills. How could I be this inferior to others out there? So I would explain that since my stint was near the end of the race, every team would send out their best drivers to make up time. And that even his lap time, our team's best, didn't even rank in the top 10 in the field. And yet here we were, number one and two earlier that day. I didn't care. 
Knowing that others were this much faster than me regardless of the car is something that still eats at me even today. I vowed to be better. The team stays late as they do a more thorough maintenance of the cars. Two bearings on the Scirocco need to be replaced and it's really neat to see Sen and Richard take time to explain to us newbies the various intricacies of the cars. After replacing the brake pads, doing an oil change and fixing the alignment, it's 9pm and we are in desperate search of a steak dinner. It's the last day and my final chance to make amends for my poor performance the previous two days. And to show some rather undeserved faith, Seth schedules me in for the final stint of the day. It's a shorter race that day, so I follow Ken's two hour stint with my own. About an hour and a half into his stint, Ken shouts from the radio, I got a flat, I got a flat, and comes in while we do a tire change. We are on our last slightly used tire. Steven jacks up the car, our friend from Rusty Rotors removes the lug nuts, and I torque them back on once the tire's been replaced. Job done in under 30 seconds. Pretty happy with ourselves and our teamwork. It's not long after that Ken radios in again. Guys, the car is dead. His car is pulled over at the end of the straight. Seth and Steven go to rescue Ken and they were able to get the car towed back into the pits. Back in the pits, the engine just won't start. Precious moments are ticking by. As Richard is out in the Scirocco, Aaron from the Rusty Rotors team jumps in even though it is near the end of the race to help us. A couple of electrical checks show that the fuel pump needs to be replaced and luckily we have a spare in the trailer. Seth jumps into action while myself and Ken look on somewhat helplessly. Before we know it, the fuel pump is replaced and I am getting strapped into the car. But with all the technical issues, we have lost about an hour in the race. Finally! It's my turn! I'm filled with excitement as I'm eager to redeem myself from the previous performances. The car feels good with the new fuel pump and somehow the engine pulls stronger than I remember. Fate would not make it so easy, however, as the course is still under a full course yellow, so I'm not able to go 100% ish. Shortly after the yellow flag lifts, a black comes down to signal returning to the pits, just as I'm finding my groove. I feel like I just can't catch a break. While we wait for the track to be cleared, said radios in in the hot pits with a difficult task for me. With the Jetta already down and out for the race, we need to try and help the Scirocco win. My job? To stay ahead of a fast Mustang. I'm very excited and eager to step up to the challenge, even if it's just to help our other car win. It's not long before I see a Mustang in my rear view. I try to block it out of my mind and just focus on my own driving. And surprisingly, I'm able to hold off the Mustang for a while until it hit the main straight, where I just cannot keep up with that American muscle. After that, it's a while before I see a car again and finally I get some time to find a groove. I practice a few of the techniques that Ken and Seth have taught me, such as wiggling the steering wheel to feel for a grip in the corners and lifting the throttle to help the tail rotate around. I feel good. Slowly, my lap times start to fall. A combination of dry track, new techniques, and motivation to not be the slowest out there has breathed new life into my confidence. I don't see a car for a long time, which is a good sign, I think. As luck would have it, out comes a full course yellow. In other words, nobody is allowed to pass and we cannot claw back time. Somewhat ironically, the Mustang I had worked so hard to fend off has flown off course in turn 8 and is deep in the sand. Eventually, the course workers extract the Mustang from its sand pit, but by this time, the race is practically over. To finish the race in chump car tradition, the pit crews all run to the wall as we do a chump car salute drive-by. With me in the Jetta and Seth in the Scirocco, we drive side by side with our team cheering us on. Boy, have I learned a lot from this. Not only skills as a driver, but the very important mental aspect of racing. Focusing on what I can do, and not getting too frustrated by elements out of my own control. Getting out of the car, I'm filled with all manners of emotion. Joy that we made it out alive despite having 25 offs amongst 8 drivers. Driving a car that Ken and I have never driven before, and doing wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing for the first time. Pride that we finished our race as a team with no damage to the car and nobody hurt. Sadness that this dream is all over, and a deep longing to do this again. What an epic adventure. The weekend was full of highs and lows, but out of it all was an experience I will never forget. I think the brilliant thing about Chump Car is that it makes racing accessible for everyone. That's not to say it's not a lot of work, or that it's free, 
but it's as close to racing for the everyday man and woman as you can imagine. Even more impressive than the cars are the people in Chump Car. Throughout the weekend, I witnessed competitive teams help each other just in the name of sportsmanship, veterans teaching newbies, and after it all, everyone goes out on the track and drives the ragged wheels off of their $500 cars. There may have only been a few trophies awarded that weekend, but in my mind, everyone truly was a winner here. They never let questionable weather, flat tires, sheared wheel studs, broken wheel bearings, dead fuel pumps, or even a questionable driver stop them. Their determination and passion are unstoppable, and for that, I am ever grateful. Thank you, Chump Car.